believe what they were seeing. You know, they forgot before they admitted him back to school, they have to give him a test. And when they saw the test, they discovered that he was doing better than the class he was supposed to join. That was his mate. And they have to move him to the next class. Praise the Lord. That is divine acceleration. So there's nothing, there's no area of your life that God cannot express himself. And that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. But there are two interesting stories I would like to point out this morning, which is in the Bible. When you talk of divine acceleration, you know, these stories, we, have been, we always read this story, but maybe we have not looked at it from the perspective of divine acceleration. One of the stories is in, is in John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 7. You read from 7 to tell. You know the story of the wine at Canaan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus, the first miracle that Jesus did when he turned wine, uh, sorry, when he turned water into wine. God, what, what Jesus did in that place is that we all know the process of producing wine. The process of producing wine is a very tasking process. It's a very tedious task to bring about wine. It starts with soil preparation to even prepare the soil because the grape that you're going to use for that wine is not just everywhere that it grows. Otherwise, all of us would have planted grapes you know, behind our houses here. Praise the Lord. So it needs soil preparation, special soil preparation. If the water is too much, it has to be drained. Hallelujah. So it's a lot of work. You set up by, you know, by setting up the, 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 the preparing the place, then you plant the, the, the you, you plant, you could do the planting, and then you water the soil if it's necessary or you drain it. Then when it's growing up, you do a lot of pruning. In fact, pruning needs, for, for grape, it needs expertise. People that know how to do it, because if you don't do it well, you mess up everything that you have done. So a lot of effort is put into it. What of the harvesting? After harvesting it, you have to crush it. After crush it, you have to press it. And that's why you have things like press, you know, wine press in the Bible. You have to press it. You have to then, before, you, before it goes into what they call primary fragmentation, for the wine to be able to ferment before you can even... Then after that, there's another aging. It is not immediately that you have produced it that is very good, you know, the kind of taste you want. Hallelujah. It can, you know, there's aging process which go to the secondary um, um, uh, fragmentation before you go into ranking and before you go into bottling. That is why when the wine is eventually bottled, for another 10, 20 years, it can be in that bottle without getting spoiled. In fact, the older, the better. Praise the Lord. But a lot of work has gone into it. Hallelujah. So I'm taking you through this journey so that you understand the effort that is required for wine to be produced. But despite the fact that this is the natural cause of producing wine, guess what happened at that marriage of Canaan? Just because Jesus was invited, just because Jesus was there with them, guess what happened? They just whispered to the mother of Jesus that the wine has finished. Praise the Lord. They just whispered that the wine has finished. What do they want him to do? He said, go and meet him. <laughs> you know, say, my time has not come. Why are you asking them to come to me? Then the mother of Jesus said, whatever he asked you to do, do what? Go, go and do it. And thank God they obeyed. What did he tell them to do? He said, they're going to fill their pots with water. And of course, they have to fill six giant pots with water. Thank God they obeyed. They didn't query Jesus. They didn't ask, why are you asking us to go and fill water? We're asking for wine. You are talking of water. Praise the Lord. But they obeyed Jesus. And after they have filled the water, he said, he told them again, go and serve it. Thank God that they also obeyed. And what did they do? What did they do? They started serving the wine. And by the, when the chairman of the party took the wine, he looked at it again and said, ah, this one is different. Why did you guys keep this? It's all, you know, all this time. This is the one you should have served first. Why are you bringing this one now? Hallelujah. Because it was so good. It was so nice. But who did it? Jesus. And he did it in minutes. This is, ordinarily, this is an effort that would take at least five years. Because before you can get the grapes to start producing the fruit that you need to make the wine, we are talking of three years. It takes three years. But he was able to do that before the other processes and everything is completed. We are talking of five years before the wine can land on your table. But the five years journey, Jesus Christ cut it short to minutes. And that's what he's going to do in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what you have been struggling with maybe for the past five years. Or what you have been, you, know, you, are, you, are, you have been trying to achieve, and it appears, you know, it's so difficult. You don't know where you are going to get it. The Lord will fast track your progress in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will fast track your process in the mighty name of Jesus. It will fast track your process in the mighty name of Jesus. The same Jesus that did it for that couple is also available to do your own. I don't know where area of your life where you require wine. Is it the wine in your marriage that is running out? 
Is it in your relationship with your parents or whatever that is running out? God can bring that supernatural wine back into your life. And that's what he's going to do for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Another interesting story I would like to mention is the one you can see it in Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. That's another interesting story of divine acceleration. And that is about Joseph. Joseph was promoted to the position of a prime minister at the age of 30 years. He was just 30. You can see that in Genesis 41, 40. He was just 30 years when he was promoted. Of course, we all know the story of Joseph. We know all the things he went through for him to get you know, to, 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 to the palace of Pharaoh. It wasn't an easy task at all. Everything you know, worked against him. But because it was time for God to accelerate his progress, even at that young age of 30, he became, I don't know whether to call him a prime minister or the MD of the commodities board. Of all you know the story. What happened was that he, was, you know, he found himself, his brothers, they conspired against him. They threw and they sold him into slavery. He landed in Egypt, he landed in the house of, uh, uh, he landed in the house of, uh, what's the name of that man? Potiphar. Potiphar's wife lied against him. And because of that, he was thrown to jail. He landed in jail, but even in jail, he was, he was able to do what God has already put inside of him. That is the ability to interpret dreams. God has already put inside of him. That's why I know that everything that you need to get to where God wants you to get to is already inside of you. And that thing will begin to find expression in the mighty name of Jesus. So because of what God has already deposited in him, even in prison, he was able to interpret the dreams of all the people, the fellow prisoners. Hallelujah. And one way or the other, the king, one of the people who was released later, one of the years, it appeared to him that you were going to be released. He was released. And when that guy was released, found himself back in his job, you know, in the, in the king's palace. And one day, Pharaoh had a dream that he couldn't interpret. And they were looking for somebody to interpret it. They called all the juju men around. They failed. And that's why you should not bother to go to any juju man. They are failures already. Praise the Lord. There is no power that can challenge the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they, all, the, all the juju people, all the, all the sorcerers, they all failed. So they were looking for a solution. And the man, no, I know somebody is in prison. Let's bring him. He's going to interpret your dream. And they brought him. And what happened? He accurately interpreted the king's dream. He said, oh, the seven years of famine, of, of plenty, and the seven years of famine. That's what we have seen. And God showed that dream to that king twice. When he finished interpreting the dream, the, 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 the king believed him. Hallelujah. The king believed him. He knows that this thing you have said, it makes a lot of sense. It's likely to be true. You know the next question he asked? He said, where are we going to get men that are filled with the spirit of God that can help us execute this thing? Praise the Lord. Because what Joseph did, Joseph did not say, come and take me to come and do anything for you. He was brought to come and interpret the dream and interpreted the dream. This is what is going to happen. You are going to have seven years of plenty. And after seven years of plenty, you are going to have seven years of what? Of famine. And it's going to be terrible. It will be so bad, the famine is so bad, that the seven years of famine will swallow, will destroy everything you think you have gathered in seven years of plenty. Praise the Lord. So, Joseph advised him, it means that you need to make sure you save enough in the years of plenty to be able to take care of years of famine. That's the advice he gave to the king. And the king said, I need a man with the spirit of God to be able to do this. Praise the Lord. And the, 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 the Pharaoh said, there's no other person. It's you. Praise the Lord. And that's why I said, the thing that you need for God to take you to where you are is already inside of you. And that thing will begin to find manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. That thing will begin to find expression in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of what Joseph was carrying in him, he was suddenly appointed as the MD of the commodities board. Hallelujah. You know, immediately. And what he did do? Very simple. In the years of plenty, the things were so, the grains were plenty, everything was plenty. All he did was to mop up the excess. He was buying up them. Now that's the work of commodities board. That's why I call him the MD of commodities board. Praise the Lord. They mop up the excess, you know, gathered everything. It's very interesting. He gathered everything in those seven years. And what happened the remaining seven years? He opened the store and started selling to people. It was not only selling to the Egyptians. There was famine all over the earth. That was the Bible says. It was not only selling to himself, also to the people of Egypt. He was selling to people of other countries, including his brothers and sisters where he left. They also came to look for food. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He started selling to, to people of other countries. 
So you can see how God can accelerate somebody, how God can move somebody forward. From prison, from a nobody, God moved him to the palace, and the palace he was enthroned. And that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The way God, and, and I said earlier, when God is involved in your acceleration, God will do it in such a way that it will become so interesting. Just like he did for that wine, you know, at the marriage of Canaan. That the wine was better than the one they even bought with money. The same thing he did with the life of Joseph. Do you know the king did not just give him that assignment and say, okay, this is the job, go and live there, this is your voyage, this is your car, this is this. No, it went beyond that. The king gave him a wife, so automatically he became a married person. Praise the Lord. When I was reading it, I said, ah, the king must have been responsible for his wedding. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Automatically, the king arranged for a wife for him. In the seven years of plenty, I trust Joseph quickly. He had two children. Fast, fast. Praise the Lord. So he became a father. In those seven years, the family has not come. He became a father. He had two children already. He became a married man. He became, a, you know, he became settled. And that's how God is going to settle somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. He has suffered for 30 years. But God brought him out. And in just one event, God turned everything around. And he was taken to the throne. That would be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The two children that Joseph had, you know what he said? When I was looking at this thing, the name he called those children is amazing. The first one, Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Verse 51. He said, Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Hallelujah. He said, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, he had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Every toil, everything you have gone through, every experience, every bad experience you have gone, you, you, have, you have gone through. The Lord will do something in your life. The Lord will accelerate your progress in such a manner that you will forget everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Joseph could not remember that his brothers were wicked to him. Joseph could no longer remember that Potiphar's wife was wicked to him. Joseph could no longer remember that he was in prison because God has done something that is so fantastic that made him forget all the stress that he has gone through. And that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Guess what he gave the second son that he had? Verse 52. And the name of the second he called Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. <laughs> this is interesting. Hallelujah. One thing is for you to be fruitful ordinarily. But another thing is to be fruitful in a place that is meant or planned to be a land of affliction. He was meant to be a slave. He was sold to slavery. But when God wants to do his own thing, he will do it in such a dramatic manner that everyone around will know that God has a hand in it. And that's what God did to him. Hallelujah. A place that was supposed to be his land of affliction, God made him to prosper. God made him to fruitful. And I declare upon you this morning, you will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. It doesn't matter that company where you are working today. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter the home where you came from. The Lord will make you fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you are a carrier of the presence of God. You are a carrier of something that will push you to success. You are a carrier of something that will accelerate your progress. And I declare upon you this morning, your progress will be, your progress will be accelerated in the mighty name of Jesus. And another interesting thing which I mentioned is that he became a blessing to all countries. Hallelujah. When God wants to accelerate your progress, you know, he creates different dimensions of it. He made him a blessing to all countries. Different countries. The Bible says in verse 57, um, um, Genesis 41, 57, the Bible says all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. He became a blessing to all nations. You will be a blessing to all nations in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be a blessing to Nigeria and you will be a blessing to Africa. You will be a blessing to the whole world in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will, will make you a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. And just like, just as in the story of that of Joseph, despite all the things he went through, those things could not stop his acceleration. The conspiracy of his brothers could not stop him. Hallelujah. And that's why I know it doesn't matter the conspiracy that may be against you today. It, they will not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not be able to stop your progress in the mighty name of Jesus. 
the lies of Potiphar's wife could not stop him. It doesn't matter whatever lie somebody has concocted against you. That lie will not be able to stop your progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Evil prison walls couldn't stop him. He was thrown into prison. A prison is a confinement. It meant to be restricted so that he will not know what is going out, what is going on outside. It's supposed to be a, you know, a confinement, a solitary confinement. But even the prison walls could not stop his elevation. There's no situation that will be able to stop you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will become what God wants to be in the mighty name of Jesus. But before I conclude this morning, I would like to say there's something that's very important about divine acceleration. There are different dimensions to it. But there's one area or two that I would like to mention because it's very important. And the first one is to realize the fact that there is a force behind acceleration. Whenever you talk of acceleration, it doesn't just up happen in the ordinary course of business, in the ordinary course of you know, events. It doesn't happen. There is a force that pushes that thing to happen. And in this case, that force is the hands of the Almighty. When you talk of divine acceleration, it, has, it means it has the hand of the Almighty in it. So that situation that you are struggling with, all you need to do is to make sure that you are close to God and the hands of Almighty is with you. It will push that thing to happen. It will force that acceleration to take place in the mighty name of Jesus. So your connection to the divine source, your connection to God is very important if you truly seek divine acceleration. Hallelujah. So you need that ability to be able to assess the source of that power that is coming from. The thing that helped Joseph was not from outside. It was from God. And it was inside him. The thing that made, that caused water to turn into wine inside that pot, it is not the work of man. It is not the work of science. Praise the Lord. It is not mixing of chemicals. There is a power, there is a force that allowed it to happen. So if you truly desire this divine acceleration, then you need to make sure you are connected to that power. Because without that power, you will be normal, you will be ordinary. But everything that is ordinary in your life will cease and become accelerated in the mighty name of Jesus. Another thing that I would like to mention about divine acceleration is that your cooperation with God ensures quick and immediate delivery of your miracle and your breakthrough. Your cooperation with God. You need to cooperate with God. Hallelujah. How do you cooperate with God? You need faith. You need to believe God. You need to believe that He is. Second Chronicles 20 20. You need to believe that He is and is the one that can do those that things you are, you, you are trusting Him for. He said, Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be what? You shall be established. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. You need to stop negative confessions. When you believe God, when you trust God, throw your heart into it. Believe that God is going to do it. There is a power, there is a force that needs to make things happen. And you need to cooperate with that force. God is ready to play his own part. But you also need to release your faith. Hallelujah. You need to release your faith. God wants to do something in our lives. At times we struggle because of our faith. Because it is too good for us to believe at times. Somebody say you are healed. Instead of trusting God that you are healed. Praise the Lord. I, I remember something happened. Some years back, I, I think it was we were in Port Harcourt. Somebody visited us and the son was sick. And we prayed for that child. I, I prayed for the child. And in my heart, I believed that this boy was okay. Praise the Lord. But the person, because the person came from abroad, hallelujah, he didn't understand what I was saying. He didn't understand what I was saying. Ah, this is my son. No, we have to go to hospital. And you see the, 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 the stress we went through that night to get to the hospital. I was using one blue bed, Tokumbo, brand very good Tokumbo. Praise the Lord. But the eyes, the, 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 the lamp, what do you call it now? The headlamp was not seen very well. And to make matters worse, rain was falling. Terrible rain. And the rain covered, you know, the, the potter courts. Most of the gutters are covered by sand and everywhere. So we don't know where gutter is and, you know, where. So you are very careful inside the rain. So we have to drive, you know, small, 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 inside the rain in the night. There was no ACO. Of course, what is AC? Praise the Lord. 
There was no AC in the car. So you can imagine what I went through that night. No AC in the car. Rain was falling. The lamp was not good. The rain was cold. But we had to struggle. We struggled and managed to get to the hospital. And when we got to the hospital, they examined the boy, examined the boy, examined the boy. You know what they told us at the end of the day? Okay. The boys will be okay. Take him back home. Observe him till tomorrow. If there's any other thing, then you come back. Of course, we didn't come back. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? When you pray to God, when you ask God to do something for you, believe God. Hallelujah. Believe that he can do it. I believe that boy was already healed. And it was okay. But because we want to do it in our own way, we have to struggle, 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 struggle. At the end of the day, nothing happened in the hospital. He asked us to go back home. Praise the Lord. Not even parastamol. So I don't know that thing that you are believing God for. I don't know that thing you are thinking that, oh, it appears it's no longer possible. The God of acceleration is here this morning to do it in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So you need to make sure that you connect to that force, you believe God, and make sure that you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't disconnect from that force. When you are driving a car, you are going on a plain ground, and you press, you put your head, you put your leg on your accelerator, and you fire the engine, what happened? The car moves fast, right? What happened? The moment you remove your leg, it starts slowing down. It starts slowing down. It will still be moving gradually, but it starts slowing down. Then it gets to a level where it will stop if you don't go back to press that thing. That's how it is. So if you need divine acceleration, make sure you are connected to the source of power, the force that will make it happen. And not just make sure you are connected, make sure you remain connected. Hallelujah. Don't say because God has done this today, you are now okay. You don't want to bother tomorrow, which is the problem many of us are facing. God has done something, we feel we are okay, then we, we want to ignore God. But that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So you will remain connected and continue to be connected in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says you should hold fast to what you have. That you should not allow anyone to take it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. And we are going to pray this morning. Because as long as you hold on to Jesus, that situation will surely end in joy in the mighty name of Jesus. And then whatever you are going through now, I know it will end in joy in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 16, verse 21. John chapter 16, verse 21 says, A woman, when she's in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a woman being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will be able to take from you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will fill your heart with joy, the Lord will fill your home with joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Every situation that appears to be very difficult right now, the Lord will turn it around and it will turn to joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise up. Let's, let's, let's just rise on our feet this morning and glorify the name of the Lord because the God of acceleration is here and is going to accelerate your progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Why don't you appreciate him? Just appreciate God. Appreciate the God of acceleration. Appreciate the God of acceleration, the one that's ready to give you progress, the one that's ready to move you forward. The one that is ready to take you to where God wants you to be. I want you to just lift your hand to him this morning and just appreciate him. Appreciate him, appreciate him, appreciate him. Because he's here to do your own. He's here to do your own. You are going to give your own testimony. Just appreciate him. Appreciate him for his presence this morning. Father, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. In your own way, appreciate him. I want you to think of those things that you have gone through in the past. I want you to think through those things that you have been struggling with. And I want you to visualize God actually taking you out of that situation and accelerating your progress this morning. I don't know what you are believing God for. Is it, it is in your marriage that it appears that you are not seeing what you wanted to see. I want you to see God coming into that marriage and doing that which he needs to do this morning. Are you believing God for a husband or a wife? I want you to see God fast tracking that progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you believing God? Do you want to hear from God? All you are waiting for is for God to confirm that this is my wife, this is my husband. The Lord will fast track that progress. Even beginning from today, in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you expecting your own child? And you have, you have been believing God, you have been asking God, where shall it be my turn? The Lord is fast tracking that process right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Is there any form of ailment in your body that you have been believing God to take away? The Lord is intervening in that situation this morning. I want you to just glorify the name of the Lord. Glorify the name of the Lord. Because he's going to do that which he, he, he only can, can do this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are going to pray some prayers this morning. And I know the Almighty God will answer us. 
But before we pray that prayer, the miracle that happened in Canaan at the wedding happened because Jesus was there. If Jesus had not been invited to that wedding, that miracle wouldn't have taken place. Hallelujah. The miracle that happened in Egypt, how God was able to solve the problem of famine, happened because Joseph, who is a carrier of the anointing, was brought into the, into the palace. There's no way you can demand acceleration from God if you don't know that God. There's no way you can demand acceleration from Jesus if you don't know that Jesus. All eyes closed. As you continue to think of what God is about to do in your life this morning, you are here this morning, you want to say, Jesus, I want to connect myself to you. Because without that connection, I cannot receive the power. Without that connection, I cannot do what I need to do. You are here this morning. You want to surrender your life to Christ. You want to say, I want to get connected to Jesus. I want you to wave your right hand so that I will pray for you first. So that you will be part of the prayer we want to pray this morning. Because without Jesus, you cannot do anything on your own. Without Jesus, there cannot be acceleration. You need Jesus. You need that power. You need that force. You are here this morning. All eyes closed. Even as we pray, please, can you wave your hand? You want to surrender your life to Christ? Thank you, my brother. Wave your hand. Wave your right hand. You want to surrender your life to Christ? Wave your right hand. Are you not tired of staying in one place? You should be tired of stagnation by now. It is time for you to move forward. It is time for Jesus to do what he wants to do in your life. But you need to be connected to him. Please, my brother, can you just step forward? Step forward so that I can pray for you first. Let's, we want to pray for you first before we go to the prayer. Please step forward. The one that's raising up his hand, step forward. Let them come forward. Hallelujah. Let, let us begin to thank the Almighty God and commit yourself into the hands of God this morning. Tell God you have come into his presence. Enough of stagnation. Enough of waiting. Lord God Almighty, accelerate my progress. Accelerate my progress. I want you to lift your voice unto the Lord this morning. If you want to surrender your life to Christ, you can still come so that I can pray for you. You need to be part of what we are doing. You need Jesus. You cannot do it on your own. Don't deceive yourself. You cannot do it on your own. You need the power of God to move forward. You need the power of God. You need the one who can change water to wine to be involved. You need the one who can see what no man can see. You need the one who can see the, the riches in hidden places. You need the one who can see the opportunities that man cannot see. You need the one who can see tomorrow from today. You need him to back you up. You are here this morning. Don't play game with God. You want to surrender your life to Christ. I'm still giving you the opportunity. I'm waiting. I have just one second more. You still want me to pray for you to surrender your life to Christ? If you are there, wave your hand. Hallelujah. Let us begin to pray this morning. I want you to say, Father. Say, Father. Say, Father. The grace for divine speech. The grace for divine acceleration. Release it upon me today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice to the Lord and pray. The grace for divine acceleration, let it rest upon me. This morning in the mighty name of Jesus, I will no longer be stagnated. I will no longer continue to wait forever. My Lord and my God, let that grace for acceleration, let it be released upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my progress be fast-tracked. Let my promotion be fast-tracked in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my progress be fast-tracked in every area of my life. Lift your voice unto the Lord and pray this morning. You need Jesus to do it for you. Lift your voice because as you say unto his ear, he will do it for you. Nothing is too big for him. Nothing is too big for him. He can take you out of that debt. He can heal you completely. He can take you out of that financial mess. He can take you out of that situation. He can take you out of lack of job to do. He can take you out of you know, that scarcity of contract that is destroying your business. Ask the Almighty God to come this morning and release that grace upon you. That from now on, you will continue to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, King of Glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. There are some people that God wants to take up. Want God to accelerate their progress. But there are some other forces, whether in their mother's house or their father's house, or from friends or from relatives, that are dragging them back. But you are going to declare judgment upon them this morning. You are going to say, Father, destroy anything that has been holding me down. Destroy it by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up everything that is impeding your progress. Everything that is holding you down. Everything that will not allow you to go forward. That will not allow you to make progress. Let it be destroyed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Send your fire, Lord God Almighty. Consume everything that is impeding me. Consume every blockade. Everything that is holding me back. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Divine acceleration is my portion. Divine acceleration is my portion. Divine acceleration is my portion. Anything that's holding you back, anything that's holding you back, let it be destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Now you are going to decree. You are going to say in the you are going to say in Jesus' name. Say in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. I stand by the authority of my Lord Jesus Christ. And I decree and I declare that from now on, every seed of limitation, every seed of stagnation, let it be completely destroyed in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, every seed of limitation, every seed of stagnation, let it be completely destroyed in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will be able to hold you back. Nothing will be able to hold you back. Nothing will be able to hold you back. The conspiracy of the brothers of Joseph could not hold him back. The lies of Potiphar's wife could not hold him back. The prison walls could not hold him back. Nothing will be able to hold you back. In the mighty name of Jesus, every wall of limitation is destroyed. Every wall of limitation is destroyed. Every seed of stagnation is destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And so, our Lord and our God, we want to thank you, we want to bless your holy name. Daddy, we give you thanks because you are God of acceleration. We thank you, Father, because there is no, there is nothing that is too big for you to do. There is nothing that is too difficult for you to do. We know you are the one that can bring about acceleration in our lives. Lord God Almighty, as we have decreed and have declared this morning, Lord God Almighty, the faith, the strength, the enablement to enjoy divine grace for acceleration, we receive this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your children here this morning. Everyone under the influence of my voice, I stand by the authority of my Lord Jesus Christ, and I declare and I decree that every root of stagnation is destroyed in your life in Jesus' name. Every root of limitation is destroyed in your life in Jesus' name. The conspiracy of the brothers of Joseph could not hold him back. No conspiracy will be able to hold you back in the mighty name of Jesus. The lies of Potiphar's wife could not hold him back. No lies against you will be able to hold you back in the mighty name of Jesus. The walls of the prison could not hold Joseph back. No, 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 no artificial incarceration will be able to hold you back in the mighty name of Jesus. From now on, you will enjoy the divine grace of, 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 of acceleration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.